Hi everybody. Um, we're going to do another yin class today. And as with the yin before, you know in the studio that we have so many props, but you obviously haven't got those at home. So if you can grab hold of, if you haven't already, a pillow and maybe a blanket in case we need them to run practice. We're just going to start in any comfortable seated position. So that might be hero's pose with your feet out to the sides, it might just be Sukhasana, easy cross, whatever's comfortable. Soften your shoulders down and away. Any hands position, soften your neck, make little shapes, little U shapes with your chin, maybe circles with your nose just to soften everything out. Tuck your chin very slightly, close your eyes, and just bring yourself to your breath. So coming up with a, a rhythm of breathing that you carry with you is like a metronome through your lesson. Breathing in deep, pausing at the top, and breathing everything out. So today we're going to focus on our hips. Our hips can be underused, which make them inflexible and possibly weak. We come from a very seated, cent seated centered council. That's not easy to say. Seated centered society. Whoa. <laughs> um, if you disagree with that, which I did when I was told that, think about the amount of time we spend sitting down throughout the day. During that time, we compress our hips, we make them stiffer, more inflexible and weaker. And that weakness can cause pain into the back, sciatica, all kinds. The muscles that are that make up our hips run around the pelvic girdle. So they're the adductors, the insides, the abductors, the outsides, the hip flexors, the gluteal group. We're not working on the muscles today. In the end, we work on the connective tissue. So we'll be working on primarily the fascia that runs, that holds all of those muscles in place. So if you find yourself engaging your muscles back off a little bit, remember to come to 70% of your range of movement. If anything feels uncomfortable for you, there are always variations. So I'll be taking you through variations and options it's not necessary to try and push yourself into any of the options that your body doesn't feel the right for you today. So, always remembering it's your body, your practice. Listen to your body. Any stage that your mind starts to wander, bring it back to your breathing. Gently opening your eyes if you have them closed. Always keep your gaze gentle throughout your practice. Bring yourself around onto all fours into tabletop pose. If you have any issues with your knees, either place your blanket underneath your knees. I actually have a sore left knee today, so I'm going to place my cushion underneath. Okay. And then just aligning your shoulders above your wrists, aligning your knees below your hips. Nice tabletop. Before we start to move, we'll just take a few cat cows. So as you inhale, <coughs> excuse my voice, as you inhale, coming forward, bringing your glutes up, so your bum up, your navel down, your chest forward, shoulders soft and away. And as you exhale, curl everything in like an angry cat. Your tailbone coming down towards the mat, sucking your navel in, chin towards your chest. Feel free to stay here for a breath or two, whatever feels nice for your body, just softening up that spine before we start. Inhaling forward and exhaling back. Take two more like this, inhale forward and exhale back. Last one, inhale forward, beautiful, exhale back. And then bring yourself back to a neutral spine. Okay. Bring your right toes back behind you, tucking your toes. And then 
we're going to bring our uh, right foot in between our palms. Now, if you can swing it in between your palms, right? It won't go all the way there like mine. Use your other hand, breathe forward. So into a low lunge. Okay. Make sure you've got your knee aligned above your ankle, not coming too far forward or too far back just yet, and lifting yourself up. If that's not possible, that's good. Excellent. If that's not possible, you can always have props here to hold you. We're just going to soften into this right hip first. So just lunge forward slightly as you inhale and come back to neutral as you exhale. Inhale forward, exhale back. One more, inhale forward, exhale back. Beautiful. Just start to heel toe that right foot towards the right hand side of the mat. Bring your left fingertips down to support you. Place your right hand inside your right foot. Beautiful. So now your right shoulder and your right knee are pretty close together. You can always shuffle your left knee back a little bit if you want to bring a stretch into the front. So the quadriceps, the front of your thighs, stretching into that connective tissue that wraps around. And that might be enough for you. So this is the Dragon Series. And there are lots of different variations that we can take it into, but just listen to your body. So just stay here, settle into the pose and breathe. Now, option. Coming out onto the outside edge of your right foot. So your right knee is now pointing out towards the right. Beautiful. So just be aware, settle again and be aware of where that changes, the sensations. Always remember we don't go to the point of pain, we go to our edge, which is where your body says that's enough. You may want to come down onto your forearms. If that doesn't work for you, don't do it. Just helps with your wrists, but it also changes the sensation one more time. You can bring a cushion there or a blanket there to lean on. Use the variation that works for your body today. And there's a couple more options which make it a little more intense. So please just obey your body. There is an option to place your right hand on the inside of your right knee and encourage that right knee away from you. You can do this by still leaning down. Choose the variation that works for you. Breathe. There's nothing else to do here. And the final option, and really, if you're not at this stage, don't do this, is to lift up your left foot towards the ceiling as if you're trying to kick yourself in the bum. And for those of you who know it's part of your practice, it's pretty intense reaching around, taking hold of the outside of that right foot and encouraging it in towards your bum. Again, these are just options. There are various stages that you go through. If you never get there, it doesn't matter. That isn't what your body was supposed to do. You wouldn't believe the amount of postures that I never mastered so far. Maybe never will. All of our bodies are different and our bodies respond differently every day. Just breathe into the sensation. For five, four, three, two, one. Wherever you are, Bring both your hands down, bring that right leg back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and make circles with your right hip. Say hello to your right hip. Maybe bending and straightening your right leg. <sighs> All right, come back to tabletop. Take a little wiggle. Second side. So from the tabletop, step your left foot back and then swing your left foot in between your hands. 
beautiful. And then coming up, oh, the sun is right in my face. Coming up into a low lunge. Can't see you. Again, lunging forward and back three times. So inhaling forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back, last one. Inhale forward, and exhale back. Bring your hands down out inside of that left foot. Heel toe your left foot out towards the left hand side of your mat. Maybe just resting on your hands or maybe coming down onto your forearms. And just breathe. So we do a lot of work into the hips in the end. Most yoga yeah, we do a lot of work into the hips. The hips are where we carry so much of our burdens of negativity and stress, anxiety. So when we open up into those hips, it helps us to unblock the meridians that feed, nourish and nurture our internal organs. Specifically, our liver, which is where we Liver and kidneys, where we carry most of our negativity, most of our anger and anxiety. So it's not uncommon for negative emotions to come to the surface. It's not uncommon for any emotion to come to the surface. If it does, just observe it with curiosity and let it go. Freeing yourself of negative emotions, making space for positivity. Again, if you wish, come out onto the left hand edge of your, the outside edge of your left foot, should I say. And maybe encouraging that left knee away from you, you might find it's completely different on this side. You'll have one side or the other that's more or less flexible. We subconsciously favor the flexible side throughout our day, which is great for the flexible side. However, it's not so good for the stubborn side, it gets more stubborn. So if you can identify which side of your body is the less flexible, maybe spend more time on that in your personal practice. And again, final option is to bring your right foot up towards the ceiling. And that wasn't going to work on that side for me today. It's a good indication that some days things seem easy. Next day you can't do them at all. It's perfectly normal. If you have got your foot up, maybe bring your hand around and encourage it, that right foot in towards your bum. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. Bring your hands back down, bring that left foot back in. Maybe circling in both directions with your left knee. Maybe straightening and bending your leg. And then bringing yourself down to a seated position with your legs straight out in front of you. In fact, bend your knees, place the soles of your feet down onto the mat, lean down onto your forearms and just drop your knees from side to side. Just windscreen wiping with your knees. Massaging out those hips. And then bring yourself up to seated with your legs straight out in front of you. Now we're going to try and bring all of that beautifully toned muscle away from your sit bones. And try and bring an anterior tilt, so a forward tilt into your hips, hips or your pelvis. If that doesn't work, maybe sit on the edge of a cushion or sit on the edge of your blanket, just to tilt yourself forward. Not stretching or pointing or flexing your feet, just let your feet be natural. What we're going to do is bring the right foot up, just inside the left knee. 
and then take your right hand, bring it around behind you, like a bicycle stand, holding your spine up, right? Maybe curl that left knee, right knee, I'm apologizing, sorry. Curl that right knee to you. Twisting your torso towards the right. Whenever I'm in a pose, I try to remember what it's called in Sanskrit. Matrichia, Matrichia Sun, something like that. Yeah. It's a beautiful twist. Whenever we twist in any yoga, we're actually internally massaging our internal organs. It's great for the digestion. And then we come to options. Option, take your right foot and place it on the outside of your left knee. Still twisting towards the right. If you want a little bit more, you're not feeling enough into your hip flexor, maybe bring your left elbow outside your right knee to encourage it, wedge just a little bit more. Some days that works for me, some days not. Drop your chin towards your right shoulder just to bring a soft stretch into the left hand side of your neck. Close your eyes and just breathe. So twisting not only is good for our digestion, it's also good for the spine. Twisting into those meridians that run alongside the spine. The meridians in the body, according to traditional Chinese medicine, which is the philosophy on which it was based, say that our chi, our life energy, runs through those sort of channels throughout our body. And by twisting into the spine, we have major meridians running alongside the spine, we unblock any blockages that might be there. Just like tiny rivers, if a river becomes blocked, it stops flowing. And if it stops flowing, it becomes stagnant. That's the same situation with our meridians. So remembering that also in yin, we stay in the poses for longer, trying to train our connective tissue tissue being the fascia that wraps our entire skeletal system, our internal organs, everything, and tendons and ligaments which hold muscle to bone, bone to bone. Very, very stubborn, very strong, takes time to re-educate. Final option here is to bring your left foot in and around so that your left heel is next to your right butt cheek. It's only an option. If your body says no, don't do it. Remember, it's meant to be uncomfortable. Whatever we're doing, you feel discomfort because you're stretching that fascia in directions it's not used to going. That's never supposed to be painful. Beautiful. For five, four, three, two, Wherever you are, unravel yourself. Come back into putting your feet down onto the mat and just wind through one more time. Are you feeling the differences between one side of your body and the other? Which means only one thing. You need to go to the second side. So straightening out your legs, and this time we're going to turn around. Yes, because I'm back to your right. Okay, this time bring your left foot inside of your right knee. Cuddle your left knee. Bring your left arm behind you with the bike stand. Try not to flop back. Try and use this to hold the spine upright, nice and proud. Just breathe there for a moment.
So as I was explaining earlier, the more yang style activities that we take part in in our everyday life, and that doesn't have to be yoga classes, although it should be. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It could be just running around after your children, running around getting the shopping done, cleaning the house, all those crazy things that we have to do every day. So taking 60 minutes out to slow everything down, slowing down our mind, taking time for ourselves, paying back that body that allows you to do all that running around, that supports you, giving back. Here we come to the next option, which is to step your left foot outside of your right knee. Beautiful. Maybe still cuddling your left knee, or maybe bringing your elbow onto the outside. You yeah, know, I'm not on my side when we did it. Still keeping your spine nice and upright. Drop your chin gently towards your left shoulder to bring a slight soft stretch into the right hand side of your neck. Just close your eyes and breathe. There's nothing else to do. So we're all very different, not just our bodies, but our characters. Some of us are very young. Some of us love to be running around doing all that heat producing dynamic crazy stuff. Some of us like to relax and just spend time. The yin and yang, when you look at them, look as if they are um, conflicting. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Yin complements yang, and yang complements yin. So try to bring a balance into your week. If you find yourself doing crazy things all the time, take some time out to slow everything down, slow down your mind. Take time to be in the present moment. And the final option, and only if it works for you, don't worry about it, is to bring your right heel around next to your left heel. Still hugging or pushing with your elbow to encourage that left knee away from you. When you will twist it up like this, it's very easy to get confused which is left and which is right. Soften your shoulders, try not to hunch. So nice and proud. So, as humans, we're intrinsically always doing. And although we may not realize it at the time, we're always focused on the outcome of that activity and what we're going to do next. And what that means is we're not enjoying that moment, we're not cherishing that moment. So remember that the past is gone, the future is unknown. So the only time to be is in the present. The five, four, three, two, one, wherever you are, unravel everything. Come back down to the mat. Another little windscreen might maybe bring yourself all the way down. Then drop your knees in towards your chest, making circles in both directions, rocking side to side, just massaging up the low back. Hips. And then bring yourself back up to a seated position with your legs straight out again. This time, <coughs> excuse me, this time we're going to bring our right foot up and over and try and bring that right knee on top of the left. So bring your half shoelace, bring your right foot, right heel next to your left hip. If it doesn't want to go there, just as close as it will get. It's enough. Now the idea here is we're going to kiss our right knee. Now 
going all the way down, then maybe all of them definitely not have Place a cushion, place your blanket, place anything underneath that left knee, and raise it up. So you can then drop forward towards your right knee. Doesn't matter how far down you go, you can just let your head flop and be heavy. The intention, that's the direction. The intention is to get towards that knee. Doesn't matter where you are. Beautiful. Just let your head be heavy. It's actually encouraged in you to allow that curvature into the top of the spine, the cervical spine and the neck. In yang classes, you'll find that you want your spine to be upright. In yin, it's actually approved of. Helps to open up all those meridians that run alongside the spine. And just breathe. If you use time and gravity, time, well, just as I explained earlier, that it takes time, repetitive practice to encourage our connective tissue to be more flexible, but also time during the practice. We stay in the poses for longer. This has a twofold effect. One, it teaches us to be still, to be more patient, to calm our minds. Also, the longer we keep our connective tissue in these positions, the more likely it is to remember. By bringing more fluidity into the connective tissue, we then gain more flexibility into our joints, which in turn helps us with the inner style activities. So another example of how yin and yang complement each other. And during the poses, during the postures, try not to let your mind wander to your to-do list. Don't worry about what comes next. Whatever it is, it's still going to be there when you finish. Just breathe into the sensations. Maybe just during the pose, as you relax, as you let your body feel safe, reassuring your body it's okay to be here, perhaps you can feel yourself coming just a tiny bit deeper into the pose. Maybe only a micro movement. Softening, finding the stillness. When we transition from pose, always remember to come up slowly and mindfully, and especially if your head has been inverted. Never come rushing up like this. Get a head rush. So slowly bring yourself back up, soften those shoulders down in the way, soften your neck. Take your right foot and place it down to meet your left. Give your legs a little tap. And then left foot. Bring it around and try and tuck it around next to your right hip. Try and bring your right knee on top of your left. And again, you might find it more difficult this side, easier this side. This is my less flexible side, you can tell. All right, and again, we're going to try and come down towards that knee, placing any props that you need underneath the right knee. Never be afraid to use props, that's what they're for. And then gently walking your way forward. <coughs> Maybe you're feeling the sensations differently on this side. One thing I'll never say to you is you will feel it here. You might. You might be feeling this into the hip flexor, into the abductor, the outside of your thigh. You might feel it into your left hip. 
who knows? Everyone responds differently, and everyone's body actually responds differently every day. Dependent on so many factors, how you slept, what you did this morning, what you did yesterday, even what you've eaten, all kinds of things, what's on your mind. So never judge or compare yourself. And never compare yourself, not just to others, but to yourself of yesterday. What is such a complex thing? Just listen to it and go with it. Come back to that deep, smooth breath. Derma and Sushma, deep and smooth. Hanging on, we are breathing. Probably the key to all yoga practice. We contain all of our movement within the breath. Traditional yin yoga was only ever about breath and stillness. The challenges of keeping ourselves still, resisting the urge to fidget either with our mind or with our body. Just take for a few more breaths. And then when you're ready, slowly and mindfully starting to bring yourself back up. Bring that left foot down to meet the right. Maybe again bringing your feet always as wide as your mat and dropping them from one side to the other. And then when you're ready, bring yourself up and around and come back into tabletop. Now, for those of you who are aware of the two different ways of doing this particular pose, then you can choose the um, variation that works for you. So we're going to come into swan or pigeon pose. If you have problems with your knees, you may want to do this supine, so it's lying on your back. I can show you both. It is no different, it's no more special. Doing it one way or the other, you're still working on the exact same areas. So for those of you who are used to doing this on your front, you swing your right knee in to touch your right wrist, Drop your right foot over towards the left and slide your left knee back. For those of you who wish to do this on your back, you lay on your back, bring both your feet up towards the ceiling, bend your knees, take your right foot below your left ankle and pull it in towards you that way. So it really depends which one feels better for you. Try them both. Some days I like to do the super one, laying on my back. Some days I like to do the one on my front. So if you're going on your front again, right knee in towards right wrist. Drop your right foot over towards the left. So like a swan, you're sitting on that. You're hitting your left heel, right heel, and meeting. And your leg behind you straight. If your leg doesn't want to go straight, you can bend it. Shuffling around a little bit here um, into what's, what's known as deer pose. Okay, if you find when you're in this pose that your hips are very high, you maybe pop your cushion underneath them just to straighten up your torso and your posture. And perhaps, again, it's an option, you might want to walk your way forward. Again, place anything there that you need to lean on. You might just want to make a pillow with your fists, the chin on there, and your forehead on there, or come all the way down onto the hands. If that's too much, maybe just rest your head in your hands. Whatever feels right for your body. And once you find your stillness, simply observe where you're feeling that sensation. 
for those of you who practice with me frequently, you'll know that this is probably my favorite pose. It works on all of those major muscle groups, all of the connective tissue that wraps around those major muscle groups in the lower half of the body. And those major muscle groups are the laziest in the body, and the connective tissue is the strongest. Works so beautifully on the hips, as we talked about at the beginning of this session. Stretching, encouraging, flexing into that connective tissue. Once you find the position that's right for you, let everything be heavy, allow the earth to support you. Come back to your breath. Calm down your mind. If your mind insists on hopping around, maybe just bring to mind something that makes you smile. Something, somebody that you feel grateful for every day. Anything, no matter how simple, we all have something to be grateful for. Just observe those sensations. Maybe the stretch is becoming less intense now as you reassure your body that it's safe to be here. Hopefully it starts to maybe relax a little bit more. Perhaps you feel that sensation is moving. That's perfectly normal too. That's just your fascia, your connective tissue, exploring its limitations. But always remembering also that when we're in a pose and we allow our body to be reassured, our mind to calm. When we come out of the pose, the connective tissue is going to bounce back. So sometimes that rebound effect is a little intense and that's perfectly normal too. However, the fascia has a very long memory. It's pretty stubborn, but it also has a very long memory. So if it remembers that your hips have been inflexible or weak, well, I'm just giving it a different memory now, that it can work this way, can stretch this way. Huh. Let go of that look. Just allowing everything to surrender to the mind. Maybe five, four, three, two. And elegantly and gracefully, which is not even possible before, coming out and circling your right hip. Say hello, right hip. Oh. Maybe straightening and bending your right leg. Just loosen up that connective tissue. And we're going to go to second side. So, tucking your left toes behind you. Swing that left knee in to touch your left wrist. Drop your left foot over towards the right. Slide your right leg back. And again, if you find your left hips are pretty high, just have a cushion or a blanket, anything you have around you. Maybe shuffle that front knee back a little bit to work on the connective tissue at the front, quadricep, front of your thigh. And 
and then slowly take your time, move with your breath, begin to walk your way forward. <sighs> three principles of here to soften, soften your muscles. We're not working on the muscles. You find yourself engaging your muscles, back off a little. To find stillness, and as I mentioned earlier, not just with your body, but also with your mind. And then to become steady. So you, by stretching the connective tissue, especially the fascia, um, we create fibroblasts in our body, which are the water-loving molecules, which in turn produce collagen and elastin, therefore giving us more flexibility into our joints. Such a beautiful practice, slow and calm. Especially for those of us who are racing around all day, it's good to keep that 60 minutes out just for you. Not worrying about what comes next or what came before. Just be aware of the sensations. Maybe this side's easier. Hmm. And just breathe. Thinking about that thing, that person that makes the beauty smile. To yourself, your favorite place, to the ocean, to the forest, the mountains. Always keeping a smile on your lips. Always something to smile for. Hmm. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly walking your fingertips back, or quick, and bring the left knee out to the side, circling, or straightening and bending your left leg. Oh. Good job. We've done a lot of work on the hips today. Just gently, either with your knees wide apart and your big toes together, or with your knees close together, drop your hips down towards your heels and soften into a child's pose. Again, if your hips don't want to go down there, you can place a cushion there. Soften your weight down. You can have your arms out straight in front of them. For a shoulder stretch, you can lean your head on your hands, or maybe you want to bring your arms around to the sides next to your feet with the palms facing up to allow your shoulders to be heavy, opening up the scapula, the shoulder blades, widening, opening up into those meridians in the spine. Just relaxing you. Let everything go. So, although child's pose is considered to be a resting pose, which it is, it also has benefits, as I said before, stretching across those shoulders, opening up into the meridians, also compression of the stomach, which is like that internal massage again for the internal organs, especially the digestive organs. So it's great for your digestion. Mm. 
And then when you're ready, slowly start to walk away forward, bring yourself back up to seat. No rush, there is never any rush. You bring your feet out. I'm not going to, I'm going to face this way just so you can see what I'm doing. But you can bring your feet out as wide as your mouth, as wide as your hips. Okay. And then drop both knees towards the left. And bring the sole of your left foot onto the. Can you see that? Yeah. Just below your knee on your right knee. Okay, and then set yourself up, right? So this is deer pose. What we're going to do is we're going to take our right hand onto the inside of our left knee, our left arm behind us, and twist. Ooh, that's different. So maybe feeling that twist into the right hand side of your body, that compression, maybe the stretch into the left hand side. It doesn't matter where you're feeling it, as long as you're feeling it, you're doing it. And this is great for the flex strength into the spine also. Twisting our spine in this strange direction. Popping all those meridians, all the blockages. Now again, you may want to stay where you are, or if it feels available, start to walk with fingertips towards the left hand side. Your right hip will come off the ground, that's okay. If you don't want to do that, don't go there. Just lean down onto your forearms. So twisting now with compression. If you can come all the way down. Bring your arms out in front of you for a shoulder stretch. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, bring yourself upright. Bring both the soles of your feet back down onto the mat again. A little bit of spring wise. And then bring your feet wide again. Now drop towards the right hand side. So the sole of your right foot is just below or on your left knee. Beautiful. Soften your shoulders down. I'm finding that my left hip is already lifting on this side. Just to show how different one side of your body is to the other. Nice soft shoulders. Twisting yourself around to the right. Your left hand on the inside of your right knee. And your right hand behind you, either on cupcake fingers, which are like spidey fingers. Or just with your palm flat down. It's called cupcake fingers because you imagine you have a cupcake underneath your hand and you're trying not to squash it. Twist your torso around towards the right. Beautiful twist. Just observe now where you're feeling the sensations, maybe compressions and stretches. All of those are okay, they're great. The only thing that's not great is pain. At any stage during any practice, you find yourself feeling tingling sensations or pinching, please. And again, there's the option here to walk your way over towards the right hand side. Walk the 
That's why you want to see on that side for me. So maybe We're just here for five, four, three, two. Come on, bring yourself back up. Bring the soles of your feet down onto the mat and gently lower yourself down onto your back. Make sure your props are handy in case you need them for our final pose. But right now, we're just going to cross. One leg over the other leg, lady cross, as if you're sitting in a chair. And legs will nicely lady crossed. For those of you who can, you can bring your right toes around behind your left ankle with eagle legs. If it doesn't work, you don't do it. Come down onto your back. Your hands either side, just so your shoulders soften down and just heel toe that left foot over towards the right hand side of your mat and then drop both knees towards the left. Beautiful. <sighs> you may want to drop your chin towards your right shoulder. Softening your neck and stretching into the left hand side of your neck. And just breathe, close your eyes. You're aware of any sensations that you're feeling in your body now, following the practice. Physically, emotionally. Hmm. Head back to center, bring your knees back up. Drop your knees in towards your chest, just make a few circles or massage into your back left and right, rocking to the sides before we come to second side. This time, placing your right leg over the left into a lady cross and that's the wrong way. Yep, yeah, that's the wrong way. Left over right. I do apologize. It's very easy for us to do. I think. And then heel toeing that. And then that's left. No, I was right this first time. I'm sorry. Right over left. Oh, dude, I wish you could speak to me. <laughs> okay, this time I'll go right. Right over left. Take the left foot over towards the left and drop the feet, the knees over towards the right. So easy for us to do, we're all human, us yoga teachers. Soften your shoulders and drop your chin towards your left shoulder. Feeling that beautiful twist, opening up into the hips and also twisting into the spine. So yeah, just goes to prove that we all make mistakes. So easy to forget which side is which. When I've got you all here in the studio, at least you can correct me. <laughs> soon, let's hope soon. 
Ah. And just relax. And breathe. Coming towards the end of our practice. Feeling really proud for taking that time to look after yourself today. So thank your body. Drop your knees in towards your chest or maybe cycling in the air. Anything that feels good now. And we just bring your feet up towards the ceiling, allowing all that beautiful reoxygenated blood to flow back towards your heart center. Before lowering yourself down gently into Shavasana, maybe placing a blanket over you. Maybe placing a cushion underneath your knees or a cushion underneath your head, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Let it go of all effort now. Let it go of your practice. Closing your eyes. Allowing the mat to hold you. Allowing your body to be soft, to surrender. Coming back to your breath without judging. Or forcing. Feeling the natural rise and fall of your belly, the expansion of your chest with your inhale, the fall of your belly with your exhale. Reminding yourself again. How good this body is to you. For all it does for you each and every day. You feel grateful to yourself for taking the time to nourish and nurture not just your body, but also your mind, your spirit, your soul. Take a moment now to feel any sensations that your practice has resulted in. Knowing that as you are now, you're perfect. And where you are now is exactly where you're meant to be. Sensation. In your personal practice, take as long as you wish in Shavasana, one of the most beautiful poses and probably one of the most difficult. Stay still. In your own time, begin to wake up your physical body. Making small, gentle movements, maybe with your fingers and toes, your wrists, your ankles. Perhaps bring your arms up over your head into a full body stretch. I've just woken up in the morning, take a deep breath in and let it go. You may want to drop your knees into your chest one last time, one last squeeze. Maybe rocking side to side, making circles. And then when you're ready, dropping yourself over onto one side into The fetal pose or recovery pose. And then bring yourself up to any comfortable seated position. Bring your hands towards your heart center. 
Dropping your chin towards your chest and closing your eyes. 